Hi everyone, welcome back. This is my long-term review of the Fiamma Caravan Active Bike Rack and sharing all the things that I've learnt after having bikes on the A-frame over the past couple of years. So, more about those tips and techniques in a minute, but first a quick overview of how this thing actually works. So first off, you wouldn't usually see this bit actually, but because we had that dodgy plastic cover uh, that wouldn't stay clipped closed, as it had been somehow injured in transit, I got a chance to film the innards for you. On the top there's usually a red plastic button on a metal pin and a spring that pushes down some sort of a brake plate, brake lever. So it pushes it down onto this ratchet mechanism, which is part of what holds the carrier closed and it keeps it under tension so it doesn't wobble about very much, which is good. So let's just give you a close up of that mechanism. So there's a pretty good system actually and it certainly helps to take the weight of the bikes uh, when you want to tip the whole thing forwards. But if that plastic box uh, the sort of cover trim did ever come undone then you'd lose not only the box itself but also the red button from the top and the tension spring as well that stops the brake releasing itself uh, so for example if you go over a particularly bad speed bump you could find something interesting happening although of course there is a, uh, a secondary lock function as well so the whole carrier is not going to tip that's for sure having said that we have done thousands of miles with this thing in place uh, both loaded and empty and I've got no evidence of, of any issues but given the really significant impact of, of uh, this risk if one of the little plastic clips were to give way then I would definitely recommend running a ring of duct tape around the top uh, just to be absolutely belt and braces about it so the strap allows you to tip the carrier with the bikes on how far you can tip it depends on what size the bikes are and the sort of frame configuration and so on and whether the jockey wheel is up or down but with the bikes off it goes way past horizontal and that enables easy access to the gas locker. One slight problem though is that there's no way to actually lock the carrier when it's wide open. Presumably you don't want to otherwise you damage the ratchet mechanism but it does mean that either you need a little helper or if your little helpers aren't being so very helpful on that particular day then some sort of webbing strap for example to throw under and around the hitch head for a few minutes just to hold the thing open while you get the gas bottles out or put the towing cover on or whatever so that's what i did that worked pretty well tipping is pretty easy as long as you can reach both the deadlock and the uh, sprung top button the sprung red button as i said so you hold the deadlock open and then push the sprung button at the top and then pull the carrier forwards and as i said i've got particularly short arms and i can still manage that so that is good a bit tricky with the bikes on i had to get myself around the back and and get everything tipped forward but empty it's incredibly easy and of course you have to keep your hand on the top button to keep the carrier moving forward otherwise that ratchet mechanism just pulls it back down again so adjusting the bike retaining arms the bike block pros I think they're called and the wheel straps is super easy and as is actually getting the bikes on the rack is at a pretty good height for me on our albeit lowered caravan well, not lowered on purpose, they're just made a bit lower. It's not like I've done a VW bus on the caravan and had it lowered, don't worry. And then actually mountain bike wheels sit really easily in the trays. So once those traps are on, actually even once one is in place, it holds the bike reasonably steady actually. So it's easy to nip round to the other side and get the other wheel done up or to put the top tube securing a strap into place. So, uh, summary, what do I think are the best points? Well, this thing is on thousands of miles and not a single bolt has come loose or moved. Um, so there's a bit of design and also we were quite careful to make sure we did everything up properly when we started out. It's all nylock nuts, so we didn't have to put any sort of um, thread glue or any of the rest of it in there. Uh, it's super easy to load and unload. And so that makes uh, taking bikes for me, those of us that are super short, super easy. So that's really good because it's enabled us to actually take them with us, whereas I don't think I would have been able to do that if we had roof carriers. When the carrier first arrived, I did think it felt a bit flimsy because I'm used to the chunky uh, two-lay stuff, but actually it's been fine. So that was something I was reassured about. So now let's switch to what needs improvement. So it's really, really a pain actually that you can't lock this thing open when you need to get to the gas locker. So if you're on your own, that's a real pain, as I said, unless throwing, you throw a strap under the hitch itself. So that, that would be helpful for um, Fiamma to think about that in the next design iteration. 
And sometimes I found in use actually that it doesn't lock automatically. So I talked about that deadlock down the side. And usually you just push the carrier back and it clips into place. But that doesn't always happen. So sometimes you have to reach behind, pull the quick release lever, give it a bit of a jiggle. That's the rack, the jiggle, not the user. And then re-engage the lock. So it, it works fine. Uh, but sometimes that wasn't quite sitting absolutely perfectly. I think maybe if you're out in different types of weather, perhaps the metals expand at a slightly different rate, which would cause that to happen. And then lastly, in terms of the need improvement, that top plastic cover really is a disaster waiting to happen. So much so that I've actually had a bit of duct tape on ours for a large amount of the time that we've had it because you know, prevention is better than cure. So at least it was a black piece of duct tape, so it wasn't too bad. Oh, and one other thing, actually, I uh, accidentally left the rack tilted, empty but tilted, and then held down under the hitch using uh, a webbing strap, and it was left there all night, actually, one night, and then the next morning when I found it and realised uh, where I'd left it, the ratchet mechanism seemed to have lost a bit of its strength, so it wasn't reeling the uh, inbuilt webbing all the way back onto the, the ratchet wheel itself. So... We fixed it, you know, when I got home, so we could fix it, and that meant a couple of pairs of uh, hands, fairly technically competent hands, pulling out split pins, and quite a few bits of different tools, so needle nose, and a range of different screwdrivers, and uh, holding things under tension at the same time as balancing other things. So, you know, we were able to rewind it and get it back to where it should be, so it's doable for the, the technically minded and the well equipped, but not everyone, I think. So certainly something to watch out for. So what about top tips? So first of all, allow yourself plenty of time uh, with the bike configuration, but also in terms of fitting the thing. Because obviously, as I said in the previous video, you've got to really think about where it goes when you tip it forward, as well as getting the gas locker open and so on as well. But once you've got the bikes on, then you've got to think about uh, where the gas locker is and where the pedals are and whether they're likely to hit the van. If you go over a bump, so you want to allow yourself plenty of wiggle room in case because they will move inevitably a little bit so make sure you're not hitting the front of the caravan and you've got to think about handlebars and different sized bikes probably and all that sort of stuff so the usual approach would be to put the heaviest bike nearest the caravan so it minimizes the huge impact it's going to have on nose weight anyway but if that means that you've got a tiny one right at the front you might find that actually it uh, fouls on the jockey wheel you may also need to do what I did, and that was to loosen off the front wheel trays and to slide them just fractionally further out, um, but to move the wheel carriers in. So it was this, the same issue. I just had the trays slightly further out, and that gave me a, a lot more clearance when the rack was tipped so I could clear the jockey wheel very easily. So to close out the video, the golden rules of A-frame carriers, I think. So rule number one. Remember that having bikes on will compromise your turning circle. So make absolutely sure that you really understand where everything is relative to the car and you've got a good visual mental picture in your head of where things are, especially when you're reversing onto a pitch. So to minimize this, fit the carrier as close as possible to the caravan, uh, whilst you can just about have enough room to get into the gas locker. Of course, if you've got a Bailey Discovery, then that's not going to be an issue because you've got no front gas locker to worry about. So you can just get the thing as close to the caravan as possible while making sure you're leaving enough room for pedals and not whacking the van with the pedals. And of course, how close you can go will not only depend on the bikes and the height and the height of the pedals, but also on the curve of the front of the caravan. Ours is particularly bulbous right where the pedals go. So that's a bit of a pain as well, which we needed to be very careful about. Golden rule number two, be very, very, very mindful of your nose weight. Um, don't even entertain this, this bike's idea on the front of the A-frame unless you've got a huge nose weight allowance or incredibly light bikes because it does make a huge impact because they're so far forward, obviously, and bikes are surprisingly heavy. You may find, for example, that you need to unload masses of stuff from your front locker to make that even reasonable. So with ours, I have two loading configurations for the caravan, one for when I've got bikes on and I know what that mass is and another one for no bikes. So again, make sure to plan in lots and lots of time to be able to get this right and to play around with all sorts of different configurations. And then again, when the kids grow up and get bigger bikes, you've got to do the whole thing again to get it all reset. So I use a Malenko nose weight gauge. It's really important to have a, a decent nose weight gauge. Um, of course, you can use a scale and a stick and so on, but it's not quite as 
portable as a nose weight gauge. So the reason I use the Malenko one is that I read that it's the only properly calibrated one. And, you know, what's the point in having a piece of measurement apparatus, a measurement instrument, if it's not properly calibrated? So there's a link uh, below to the one that I use in case you want to pick up one of those. And finally, golden rule number three, payload, payload, payload. Um, before you part with your hard-earned cash, do take your normally loaded caravan uh, to a weighbridge and make sure to ask the, the folks there uh, about how accurate it is. You know, some of these weighbridges are only accurate to the nearest 20 or 50 kilos even. You know, if they're used to weighing a huge 44-ton lorry, then we turn up with our ton and a half caravans or whatever it is. <laughs> then obviously, it's quite a different weight. Anyway, find out if you've got any allowance left that you can actually use or work out what on earth you're going to have to take out um, to be able to get the bikes on the front because bikes wear a surprising amount actually. I think I measured ours up at somewhere between 14 and 16 kilos a piece and that's crazy and it's not always the big ones that weigh more. Um, you know some of the little kids bikes are all steel so they weigh a surprising amount compared to some of the slightly bigger ones which you can start to get in aluminium. So just be mindful of all the weights and stuff before you start investing hundreds of pounds in carriers. Luckily, our Ariba might be small, but it's beefy. And uh, these things can actually be specified with a different chassis, a much beefier chassis. And they're built like that in the factory itself rather than the standard chassis. So uh, the chassis we've got on ours over the standard gains us an extra 90 kilos after the extra weight of the chunkier chassis is taken into account. Um, so it's not just a weight plate upgrade. For us, we've actually got more metal down there, which is really great. So I wish more manufacturers would offer that option, especially if you're buying from new. You know, it's not so difficult to put the same box on a chunkier chassis. So after all our options have been added, I think we've still ended up with something like a 350 kilo playload, which is great. That gives me plenty of, to play around with. Um, though I do try not to use all of that, that's for sure. I just like to carry a normal amount of stuff, uh, but perhaps with the bikes as well, and then err on the side of safety, really. So that was quite a lot of detail. I hope, though, it was helpful thinking about it like that. Um, do take care. Do think about these things carefully before you take the plunge. And as I said, I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching and bye for now.